Can you explain shit on this? What I'm saying, in essence, is that ask them, why do you have to vote? Take from a place like this, because in most cases, they will first tell you that, hey, they said they might ask us one day that they do vote. If they actually want to go to hospital or they want to go to school. Mm. That's the reason why you understand why he or she must vote. Now, do you know the person? No, we don't know. They only came to our market and said that we must vote for this particular party. If we don't vote, they will close, they will close our market. That's all. The same thing in the North. Is it the Arimogiri you want to start asking why are you voting for a particular party or what do you understand by the ideology? No. Mm. They are the majorities. Look at the queue now. They are the comfortable majority that determines who our leaders are. I'm beginning to think that there must be some qualification to this right to vote. Either in terms of knowledge, in terms of stake. Mm. Maybe in the, at the point in time in England, in America, you have to be a property owner. At the point in time, you have to be a tax owner. In some instances, they introduce literacy. Mm. So we need informed people to take informed decisions. Mm. So I'm beginning to think that's an extreme position. The so majority of our voters are not informed. They don't even know what they are doing. They don't know. Ask them, who did you even vote for? I don't know. The best they will tell you, maybe 50 p APC, finish. What do you understand by it? What did they say they would do? No, why not? finish. Mm. That is the question we are finding ourselves. Can anything good come out of that system? No, it can't. It cannot. That's the reality. So me, I'm not optimistic at all mm. that anything good will come out from this present electoral system, except it's over all. Okay. There are so many other plagues so, around it. So many other plagues. That just, I'm just mentioning one out of so many. So, but what I see conclusively is that with this one, not too sure that we can have the best product for our nation. How will you assess the current governor of Lagos, the governor Sawulu, in the last one year, 22 years now? Well, the, the governor of uh, the current governor, well, I would say he's trying his best. Uh, unfortunately for him, <laughs> he's been confronted with so many challenges, and SARS, COVID, year and year, battling with so many other things, a lot of the structure but beyond that of course has, i have my reservation in certain area for example i've had called to tell you anytime i have the opportunity to say governor you are not being too decisive the way i would expect a governor of lagos state to be mm. to certain extent a lagos a governor of lagos state if i can use the word need to be a bit erratic okay. you have to be it's, it's, you have to take tough stance on issues you can't uh, just negotiate uh, by their nature and not people I tell you for people from my own experience when I was in government is that they are not people that are easily amenable to rule. But I tell you when you enforce, they follow immediately. Mm. They follow immediately. Everybody fall in line. I know you had that issues when BRT came to Lagos. BRT, last part, all of them. But eventually, we saw the way government actually was tough, but got re uh, resort throughout. Mm. So for me, that is the only aspect that I believe that it needs to come out stronger on in terms of being really, really tough for some issues. Beyond that, it's difficult these days to start uh, assessing in view of the pandemic, particularly the, that they have to spend most of the money that we have been used for infrastructure and are now being diverted to pandemic treatment, buying vaccine there today, setting up uh, isolation center here and there. And all those so it's been difficult for the current governor. Yes, he, 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 he's faced too many challenges <laughs> to assess him objectively. Okay, all right, now let's move forward now. 2023 is around the corner. Politics have started in full fledged whether we like it or not, politicians have come out to say that the journey of 2023 has started since 2019. You have somebody who you worked with at a point in Lagos, that is Ashok Bola Nectimu. He has not said he's coming out. But we've seen so many things around that and so many permutations going on. What's your view? So my view is that uh, you've said it all. He has not shown interest as far as I'm concerned. He has not manifested any interest, and I've not even seen any class thing. But my experience in politics is that you see, we have in this kind of trade, you have a lot of psychopaths for personal benefit who want to tell you, as like I said at the, during my introductory minute, shortcut to everything. Mm -hmm. By the time we go, you know the clout of actual uh, So if we set up organization on his behalf, people will donate. We are able to corner some things or resources here and there. <laughs> That's so the jamboree. That's the jamboree going on now. Okay. That's the jamboree because the man himself has not told you I want to come out. He has not set up any machinery to the best of my knowledge. So 
But you know, people are at liberty to always enjoy themselves. That's my view of it. So, 2023, if he decides to come out, yes. do you see him as the precedent that Nigeria deserves at this point? You see, again, my view of it is that if he decides to come out, like you said, you use one word which is very good, permutation. A lot of permutation we have to come in. As an analyst, for example, I will see, I see a situation. One of the very first challenges that I see is this religious issue. Whether we like it or not, we cannot gloss over it again. We cannot pretend about it again. We have succeeded in pronouncing and emphasizing factors that divide us rather than factors that unite us. Religion is one of them now. An average Christian will tell you now, no, it cannot be. But, but it's not even so much of my problem from the South. As a whole. In the North, uh, if my interaction is correct, I'm beginning to see myself being challenged that would the North be willing to concede the ticket of vice presidency to a Christian or not? The major problem I have, it, me personally, I don't know, is I tend to believe that whoever must be president of Nigeria, in my view, should not be more than 60. Mm. That's the way I'm thinking. You know, that's the way I'm thinking. So the current president of the United States of America, the oh, is don't compare side. apple with oranges, my brother. Apple you with to, orange. We are living, <laughs> yeah, we live geometrically. Okay. There, they live arithmetically. What do I mean? If you see a forty-year Nigeria, is as good as seventy-year-old American. In terms of everything. The way we use ourselves here, you want to compare with where an average American uses there, or you want to compare the egg facility here with the egg facility there. No, you can't. You compare likes. So they are like autopilots over ah, there. What we just it, it's it. even go beyond autopilot. It's that of person, person. A 50 year old Nigerian, you can't compare with 50 year old American in terms of physique, in terms of health. Mm. I know you can't. It's not possible. Don't even be using that one at all. I always tell people so it's a wrong comparison. Invariably, you are expecting somebody. A younger woman be that can run from one corner of the country to the other. You award the contract here. You mentioned the issue of corruption. You award project here. They bring photographs of another project. Or you say, ah, the, the thing is progressing well, sir. Everything is on course. What else nothing is going on? You need a president that can run from Kano to Lagos, from Lagos to Akwai. Move around. Move around. You need the energy. Don't pretend about it. Unless they don't. You can't gloss over the issue of it. physical fitness in this game. After before, I told you, I cannot do all those things that I did before now in my age. And the same manner, now take the federal. You must be agile. You must have that capacity. You must have the F. You must have the age on your side to do this business. You can be the most brilliant person if you don't have the age. The president confessed now. You forgot him. Yes. He said so. He said, ah, I wish I could have done this thing when yes, I was much earlier. <laughs> and that's the reality. He's not deceiving himself. Except he wants to endanger his head. That he will start jumping from one end to the other now. Okay, yeah, we just have to go. Before we go, let me ask you this. There has been a call for cessation by some people. We have Sunday Igbo declaring Yoruba Nation, or the Yoruba Nation for the Southwest. We have um, Asari Dokubo declaring, merging the, um, the Southern part and um, the Niger Delta and the Biafran together, saying they, are, they want to stand on their own. All the cessation, do you think is a way to go? Well, I do not believe it's a way to go, but let me tell you, you cannot have peace where there is injustice. There is injustice in the land. Don't let us pretend about it. There is injustice in the land. There is inequality in the land. There is unfairness in the land. Except those issues are addressed. The call will continue. And if it continues, nobody is sure what will happen at any point in time. Because the entire nation is tense now. On the normal day, they were gone after Igbo. But if they go now, people will read a lot of media and it could snow, it could backfire. Because they will tell you, the same that people have been saying it in other part of the region, they've been saying so many things, you didn't do this, you didn't do that one. So, the reality is that, whether by way of, uh, what do they call it, restructuring, physical federalism, or any of those, something must happen. For example, I've told you that I do not personally believe in all this... Uh, Quota, federal character. No nation will ever progress. You see, in America, where the principle started from, it used to be called reversive discrimination, just to allow accommodate the, other. yeah to accommodate other races to be able to meet up. But it had a terminal date. Mm. 
In Nigeria, I won't see that now. Who told you now that the Northerners have not caught up with us educationally? And you are still saying educationally is disadvantaged. For where? Mm. I interact with the Northerners a lot. I see so many excellent, well educated uh, people among them, exactly. sufficiently uh, 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 enough to even occupy all the offices, public offices in Nigeria. And you are still saying educationally for where? No, these are the issues. This thing is not a channel. When you put out some policies that ask a grace period that you, you put them on, you wear them on. But yeah, anything we do, it's not like prices going up, you say it will come down. It never comes down in Nigeria. It's not in our character. And the same manner is this idea. So for me, until all those injustices on fairness are addressed, this thing will continue to be on the rise. It will continue, coupled with the fact that there is so much poverty in the land, the land. and people are jobless. Ah, they are looking for where they will engage as yes, I succeeded because of nothing than other than the people saw us free food, they saw enjoyment. Ah, everybody migrated towards it and it became a carnival. So the same thing now, if you are not careful if the economy continues to go down, people will continue to migrate towards those people calling for society. Ah, okay, let's even go, let's go. Even if you ask somebody, why are you there? <laughs> you don't why are you know. going? <laughs> you don't even know. You say, we don't go agree. <laughs> Finish. So these are some of the issues that are happening. Okay, this is very pertinent to me, and I must ask this. I remember vividly that about a few years ago, you started a movement, um, NGO precisely, United for Change, where you were training young minds. You got into governance as, in your 30s. What message do you have for Nigerian youth? You, you've been so pessimistic about we changing the situation in another few years. So the youth are the leaders of today and tomorrow. So what do you think will be the way out towards getting them on the right track and changing this nation for a good? Well, for now, number one, I believe that they are not the leaders of tomorrow. They are the leaders of today. That we must get right. Good. We are already depriving them of their entitlement. What is responsible for our leadership training at USC is simply that some people, some adults, will often tell you that, look, they don't have the capacity. Okay. Number one, they forget that it's an indictment on themselves. Mm. Who ought to have given them the capacity to, to do to fail? Now, now we now say, okay, let's assume without considering that these youth do not even have the capacity. Let's train them. Let's give them the capacity. Let them take over. They are the people with the necessary ideas and uh, uh, energy to drive the process for us. That inform our yearly leadership program. That we believe that the more we train them, the more we confide in them. But our role as elders at this stage will always be advisory, guide them from our own experiences. But in terms of actual managers of the nation, it must be these youth. They are the highest stakeholder. Come today, who are the highest, uh, who, who are the highest number of people that are unemployed? They are the people. Yes. They are the people suffering. So you must give them the opportunity of paddling the ship of the nation. That is our conviction at USA. And we believe that one of the ways to do it is to continue to train them, get the community to appreciate them, and where necessary, try to guide them in the right path. For me, these are the little, little things that we add up eventually to making a nation. But insofar as we do not pay enough premium to this use, banditry, kidnapping, Boko Haram, uh, raping, all these evils will continue to thrive in the nation until we address their problem. Thank you so much, Dr. Moise Barney.